Hey, 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 this is TJ Murphy, and welcome to another episode of Adventurous Entrepreneurs. Get ready for a really cool and impactful conversation. I had a lot of fun chatting with my guest today, Jared Brick. Jared is a media marketing thought leader and video creator. He's the founder of Brickhouse Media, creator of Zen Hustlers, the host of the Zen Hustlers Balance podcast. He also co-hosts Digital Champions on Daily Ad Brief, is a father of two, and an all-around awesome human being who's committed to empowering and motivating talented people. Just a few of the golden takeaways Jared shares in this episode are how to become a thought leader and why everyone is a creator, why video content is so crucial and how to get in the game, and how to maximize your efficiencies and create boundaries to live a more adventurous life. So without further ado, this is me and Jared Brick talking about branding, adventures, and other cool stuff. Welcome to the Adventurous Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, TJ Murphy. Since quitting my corporate nine to five and starting a business while backpacking through Asia back in early 2017, I've had the privilege of learning from some incredibly adventurous entrepreneurs. Through these conversations and my own journey, I've learned that much like in life, entrepreneurship is an adventure. On this podcast, I explore the journeys of top performing leaders in their fields. These wide ranging conversations include tactical business advice, how I built this insights, lessons in leadership, life hacks, travel stories, favorite hobbies, and insights into living a purposeful and joy-filled life. Adventures await us, so let's dive in. Hey, Jared. Welcome to Adventurous Entrepreneurs. Thanks for having me, man. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, same, brother. Great to have you on the show. I've been tuning into the daily ad brief lately, and I've been loving the new energy you bring into the digital champion segments with Charlene. So before we get into your journey and what you're focusing on over at Brickhouse Media. I'd like to start there. Can you share what Digital Champions is all about and how you became a co-host on the show? Yeah, so Digital Champions is a media platform where they interview entrepreneurs and thought leaders and you know professionals from different industries, mostly in media related. Um, I was interviewed a couple of times last year and when they needed a new co-host, they reached out to me to co-host. I have a podcast, I'm on video a lot. And it's been fun. So I co-host uh, once a week. We shoot about five to seven episodes in a two-hour window. The really concise, short-form, seven-minute interviews. And uh, the nice thing is, I get to actually engage a lot of people on my LinkedIn profiles. So a lot of my connections from LinkedIn signed up to be guests because they were in related fields, and I get to learn more about them, which has actually really been fun. Because sometimes we'll add people on LinkedIn, but you don't really get to know them that well, you know. Yeah, it's a good way to continue the conversation. Having been on myself just once, it is a super cool format. And if anyone's in the digital space, a creator, marketing, definitely check it out. You can be a be a guest and meet some cool people and have some good content to put out there. So it's fun. It is fun. All right, man. Well, I'd like to start with a little background on your journey. So can you yeah. tell us a little bit about your story leading sure. up to you becoming the adventurous entrepreneur you are today? Yeah, so I was uh, grew up on the East Coast in New Jersey, and it was one of those places where it never really sat right with me. It never really fit like who I was. And luckily, um, my parents were smart, and they had a second small little one bedroom condo up in Vermont. And I remember every time we went to Vermont, I just was super happy. And I was running around and jumping in rivers and skiing and learned how to ski there in the freezing ice, cold mountains of Vermont. And um, and then my father, who was an amateur photographer growing up, you know, subscribed to National Geographic. And he would leave the magazines all over. And I remember just picking that thing up and being like, what? Like every episode just or every issue just blew me away. Yeah, this exists. Whether it was like elephants or, or travel or adventure photography or whatever it was, it just it sunk into me. And, you know, as a kid, people would ask you, you know, what do you want to be as you as, when you grow up? And I would say, I want to be a National Geographic photographer. And I remember a lot of adults like, oh, yeah, yeah, good, good job, kid. And this is back in the 80s when, you know, we treat kids a little bit differently now, a little bit more authentically now, I think. Yeah. And so uh, every inch of my room as a kid was covered in images, whether it was sports, but it was usually like adventure sports, snowboarding, skiing, surfing, um, cars, just different people and athletes that I loved completely different than my sister who had like pink walls and you know, <laughs> totally different. And so yeah. images was always soaked in me. I did a lot of art uh, growing up. I did a lot of creative 
outlets, but it wasn't until college going to school at Boulder where I really got into photography and studied film. I love it, man. I used to, my parents always had national geographic subscriptions and just had stacks of those. Yeah. Magazines. So I would sit there and just pour through them when I was bored. And yeah, like you, it was very inspiring to see what laid out there in the world outside of my little bubble in yeah. small town, Oregon. So let's bring things forward a little bit. What, yeah. what's your focus on today? Tell me you know, where things are at. We're here in November 22. What's yeah. going on over at Brickhouse Media and with all the other projects that you got going on? Yeah, so it's been a journey. We'll get into that a little bit. But um, next year, 2023, I'm celebrating 10 years Boom. of starting Brickhouse Media. It used to be Brickhouse Images. And I used to be a freelance photographer and videographer prior to getting my MBA. Uh, when I got my MBA from Presidio Graduate School up in San Francisco, it really allowed me to do more for clients. It, I didn't like as a freelancer, first of all, the up and down popcorn nature of the business. Didn't know exactly when my next job or client was gonna arrive. And then I would hand a client an asset, like a video or a photo shoot, and I had no idea what they would do with it. I didn't know how they would leverage it. I didn't know if it would die on YouTube. I had no idea, like really, I didn't get into their business. And um, after the 2009 economic crash, uh, me and my wife, uh, we moved to Maui. We didn't have kids yet. We were living in San Francisco and we thought, well, let's go on an adventure. And she ended up getting pregnant. And then I thought, oh, shoot, I'm going to have a kid. I better get my shit together. And um, went back to school and got an MBA at Presidio. And after that journey, there's you know story upon story here, but um, it allowed me to create a media company. And with a media company, you can do the projects you want to do. It's very wide scope. And what I started focusing on was uh, everything related to visual media. So photo, video, creating social content, putting that content into email, into campaigns, into landing pages, um, and then getting into the strategy of it, of where we're going to deploy, how are you going to deploy? And I ended up really helping certain professionals become thought leaders. This is back in 2013 when I started. This idea of thought leadership was very early. Yeah, was um, one of my clients, uh, Brandon Peel, who's an amazing author, um, he said, you know, you're really helping me become a thought leader. And I was like, what does that mean? So I dove into that world of like, well, what is thought leadership? How do we create thought leadership? And, you know, as you can see, I created a course. It's over here somewhere. Yeah. One of those I corners. <laughs> yeah, one of these corners is all reversed. Um, how do you become a thought leader by leveraging media? By just, I've worked with seven-year-olds. I've worked with 80-year-olds. It doesn't matter. Wow. Um, the, the thing that I love about what we are up to is you don't have to first have the book, first have this big professional long-term career to become a thought leader. You have to have expertise in one area. You've got to have a ton of passion for that area and you got to bring something different to the table. So I love working with people like that. That's my dream clients are folks like that, whether it's a technology, whether it's an author, speaker, coach, consultant, startup, Sometimes it's a local business when they're really, I feel like doing something unique, but often it's somebody um, in those other areas. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing you've mentioned to me before in one of our previous conversations that really resonated was that everybody can be a creator and that all companies yeah. can be media companies. Yeah. What do you, what do you mean by that specifically? And why do you think it's important for people to leverage video, especially when it comes to their personal and company brands? Yeah, it's great. So I didn't coin that term. That was Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V, you know, famous media creator who has a team of people who really distilled in all of us or instilled in all of us. If every company became a media company, then they would have control over their own voice. They would have control over what is put out to the world, the perception of their brand. And so by being having every company have some aspect doesn't mean you become a full-fledged media company, by the way. It means you have a say in the matter of how you're perceived, how you're represented, what's your brand voice by creating content, either internally or with you know teams and partners um, to really share what are you about? We, we're, I'm a huge fan of Start With Why. You know, so why, do you, why are you in business? Tell that story. And then how do you deliver that business and what are the products and services that you're gonna offer the world? So if you start with that why journey, and that's why we love video, because 
nothing shares human emotion like video. It, there's just isn't a platform. Because if you think about it, we've been sitting around a fire for 100,000 years telling each other stories. And it's only recently that we kind of lost that. And now with television and then, you know, video, it's coming back where you and I can see each other and we can have a conversation. And you're in Oregon and I'm in California. It's amazing, right? And yeah, I feel like it's, really it's, so, it's so crucial for, for really any business and also just you as a personal brand making media and especially video a, a core component of everything that you do. You got to tell your story. You got to make sure that people understand what it is that you do, the problems that you solve, what differentiates you yeah. from all the other competitors out there in the market. And you're an excellent content creator yourself. Thank you. Thank what, you what, ad, what advice would you give to people who are just getting, getting started content. with it or, or just yeah. overwhelmed by it in general and may not be comfortable right yeah. out of the gate or really know how to efficiently create content and grab people's attention? So I'm going to, I'm going to drop a couple of uh, tips that my mentors, and I, I really believe in mentorship, uh, whether it's Gary V, someone you don't even have a one-to-one -one relationship with, or someone in your life that can really look at how you're working. So one of, one of my mentors says automate, delegate, and delete. So what are the tasks you can automate that you can give to someone or create a, you know, a AI platform or something that can automate some of those tasks? What are the tasks you can delegate? Maybe it's to a virtual assistant an assistant on your team or someone else on your team to do. And what are those tasks you can just delete? Those, I'm a big fan of the 80-20. What is that 20% that's just hanging you up? Just get rid of it. Just try to outsource the things you're not good at and then hire for the things you're good at with the delegate. Try to automate your process so it's super hyper efficient. And when it comes to content, it's like you said, you gotta understand your audience. You gotta understand your product so well that it's not you just espousing what you do. It's how do I help you? How does what I do help you? How do I give you what you need to hit your goals of your business? And so that has a lot to do with listening, has a lot to do with interviewing your clients or prospects and getting that feedback of like, oh, you know what? We really want to do X. We, and it's not just a KPI. It's not just a, a metric. It's like, we want to be the brand that's seen for doing this. Well, let's tell that story and let's create content that always leads people down that story, or at least is on brand. At a minimum, have your content be on brand. You can see today, I'm actually using a green screen. This is a branded wall with branded content. Like it's everything I put out, I wanna put out on brand. And so when everyone, ever, anytime everyone sees me, they have this instant comfort of like, oh yeah, that's Jared and that's Brickhouse Media. And we, I know that feeling, I know the feeling. and and. A lot of people don't realize we don't make all our decisions in our brain. It starts in your gut, it works up to your heart, and then you make a decision from your brain. So it yeah, was a, a long-winded answer to a good question. I don't know. It's, it's a good yeah. answer though. And I think, you know, the core piece there is you also have to understand what your brand is all about before you can even dive into that. So really yes. digging deep. And like you said, listening to your gut, what is your heart? And then what is your head telling you? And putting that pen to paper and figuring out, okay, these are the buckets of who TJ is as a personal brand. Yeah. For me, it's, you know, adventure, it's family, it's being of service to others, especially business owners. Yeah. For everybody, it's going to be different. For your company, it's going to be different. So you need to really sit down and dig deep with your team, figure out what it is that you're striving for and build content around that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, in this uh, thought leadership course, week two, it's a six week program. Week two is all the brand. It's all about building your brand voice. Who are you? What do you do? What do you sound like? You know, if you were to walk in a room, what would you sound like? What would you look like? What would your interests be? And I think the mistake is with smaller businesses or solopreneurs, it doesn't have to be you. It doesn't have to be the same things that you like. They should be things that you value and you, you, you know, but it doesn't have to be TJ or Jared. It really has to be something bigger or something different that people resonate with. And it has to resonate. And I think the mistake is, and I, I love when people tell me this, oh, who do you want to target? Everybody. Everyone. <laughs> and I just go, that's a great goal. Wrong answer. Yeah. Get, you know, like there's this, there's this idea of micro niching right now. Like get really, really specific on what you're good at. Find that core audience and then grow to more and more. Because not, I don't know anybody that everyone loves. I don't. No. I can't think of I, one I, person that some group doesn't have a problem with that 
group or entity or person. Yeah. Better to find your 100 true fans than yeah, yeah. try to speak to the masses and land silently on everybody. Exactly. Yeah. I want to rewind a little bit because yeah. I want to paint a picture. You're a busy guy. You run a successful company. You have two kids. You host mm -hmm. a successful podcast. You're co-hosting another podcast. How do you do it all? You, we were talking about creating the efficiency and deleting, delegating. What does that yeah. look like for you? If you could actually paint an example for people. Yeah, great question. And I'll, I'll go back to what I used to do. Um, I've tried three different models of my business over the years. So at first it was just me when I just started and I was working with the clients that I had coming in the door. And then around 2015, 2016, I said, you know what, I want to build a team. And I started hiring people as staff. Um, you know, I had a, I had a project manager, I had a content strategist, I had a video editor that was challenging only because in our line of work, you can have peaks and lulls of clients. Yeah. So having staff became challenging. And so then I shifted to a contractor model, which is what I'm in today. So I have contractors per project when clients and let's be honest, money comes in the door. I can push some of that revenue over to my contractors. And you always want to work with people smarter than you in their area, yeah. or at least people that are highly trainable to say, Hey, here's my process. Here's what we're going to do. Um, I'm a big fan of having an omni channel presence. So if I share one piece of content, I'm going to push it out. And I used to use tools like buffer and Hootsuite to really push out a lot of content to multiple channels. I'm doing more organic posting now with a VA. So virtual assistant. So remember automate, delegate and delete. So the automate or the delegate part can be, okay, here's a roadmap. Here's the content we're going to push out. Here's my VA or my assistant or my, you know, helper contractor to deliver those media assets to different channels. Everything's built, everything's ready to go. And I've, it's actually easier when you're actually so on brand because you're kind of fitting things into a mold. You're not reinventing the wheel every time you do something. And I think for new clients and new companies that aren't used to this, they think they have to reinvent themselves every time they do something new. I'm like, no, find your style, keep tweaking it, keep getting feedback, and then keep pushing it out. But yeah, I went through a really intense personal journey 2017, 2018. And, you know, my business was struggling. We moved to a different location. Everything seemed to just be hitting me all at once. And that's actually how I created Zen Hustlers. So Zen Hustlers is my you know, side brand platform. It's a free community resource website to support busy entrepreneurs to find balance on the edge. So a lot of the things you're hearing today is because of working with mentors, listening to the experts, not trying to think I have all the answers, going, what do the experts do? What are some of my mentors that people I really respect do? And then how can I model like that so I can have more time with my kids, more freedom to do the projects I want to do in my life, enjoy my work more, uh, not take it all home with me at night. And that's one dangerous thing, uh, working from home. It's really hard to tune out and switch off at the 100%. end of the day. So I ended up getting an office space. I'm much happier coming to a location where it's like, this is my workspace. Like you wouldn't do yoga in your closet, right? No. So you go to a yoga space. Why do you do that? Because when you get there, it's the right mindset, right? So that's what I believe office space can be like. So even if it's at your home, have it be different. Have it be a very controlled workspace. I felt horrible for people during COVID when they were working in their kitchens and their bedrooms. And it just, it wasn't fair. They didn't have space. I get it. But yeah. it's just so hard to, you know, find that balance for you when you're, you could always work. Let's face it. In today's modern world, you could always be working, especially if you have your own business. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. It's nonstop. You have to create those boundaries for yourself. And then, like you said, even if it is in your home, like my wife and I, we both have a home office, but mm -hmm. we make sure that those are exclusively rooms for work. And yeah. we have rules where, okay, five o'clock, no matter what, unless like we're on a call. And as soon as that yeah. calls over, we're stopping, we're turning off the lights, we're closing the door, we're going downstairs, yeah. we're having dinner together. If we have to come back and do work later, that's fine. But yeah, yeah, you yeah. got to take a break and make time for your family, make time Health, for healthy boundaries, for hobbies. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Healthy boundaries, creating those healthy boundaries. And it's and don't forget, it's your office, too. Like if you're going to an office, some people burn out 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. They don't leave the office. That used to be the old model. Now it's work from home. Um, so, yeah, you just got to be careful. 
Gotta be careful. And you can know because if you're coming home burnt out every day, you're fried, you got nothing left at the end of the day for your family or your or your partner, whoever it is, they're getting the, the worst version of you. That's going to hurt your relationships, which kind of bleeds into everything else in your life because then you've got drama and emotion stuff you're taking into your work day. So this is the stuff that we talk about with Zen Hustlers. We have a podcast, Zen Hustlers Bounce. We interview people that we really feel like are walking the talk. Yeah, I love the beauty it. Beauty for me is I'm not an expert. I'm I'm here to learn and I'm here to absorb all the tips. And I like yesterday's was with Anthony Trucks, he's an amazing coach. I feel like I got a coaching session just on the podcast. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. that's the beautiful thing. Like yeah, the world of podcasting is totally new to me, but every time I sit here in this chair and record an episode, I'm always learning too. I'm taking yeah. notes and yeah. revisiting and there's there's so much. You're never the expert. There's always gonna be someone you can learn from. So yes. I agree. All right, man. So this is a podcast about entrepreneurship, but yeah. one of the biggest hurdles that we all face at one time or another is living that well-rounded life and doing the things that bring us joy with the people that we care about most. What does yeah. that look like for you? We kind of touched on it a little bit, but. Yeah. So um, I moved my business down here. I was based in Oakland in 20, started in 2013. And I, I really love the Bay area, but it wasn't really suiting me personally. I, you know, went to school in Boulder in Colorado. I spent three years, my first three years working Aspen as an adventure mountain photographer running the events division and races. And I literally worked in ski and snowboard boots for 120 days a year. It was amazing. I love that. And I had a really fortunate role there where I got to go all over the mountain doing races and private parties and portraits. And I wasn't the guy at the top of the lift. That's a different job, but I learned from all those guys and they were expert photographers. So I love the mountains. And so when it came time to move in 2017, we created this mega triangle. So if you got the Bay Area in the, in the left here, Tahoe all the way to the far east, Sonoma County all the way to the north, and all the way down far south in, in California of Ventura. So we made this huge triangle box. And we were like, you know, I had married an adventure guide also. We were both guides when we met in Alaska. Um, so she was very much into, yeah, we want the kids to have a really healthy outdoor life as kids because we felt like that was going to build them a foundation regardless of anything going on in their lives. They were going to have this really strong foundation of outdoor sports, loving nature, feeling content in nature. And so we ended up choosing Santa Cruz Mountains. Um, I had lived in Santa Cruz by the beach when I was single, no kids. I surfed all the time. I actually uh, managed an outdoor store while I was a photographer there. And we came back, but this time we moved into the Redwoods. So we live amongst the Redwoods. We go mountain biking all the time. We go surfing when it's not freezing cold, which it normally is. Yeah. And then we can drive to the snow of Tahoe and the mountains out there, which are just incredible. So my kids, I'm so thankful. They love all the sports I love. Um, you know, I'm teaching one of them to ski, one of them to snowboard. I just got my son a full suspension mountain bike. And he is 12 and he's pushing me on the trails now as yeah, far as cardio. Uh, he doesn't have a skill quite there yet as much as tacticalness. But like, I just, you know, my theory was when I was younger, I didn't have a ton of money to vacation. So live in a place where other people vacation. And you're going to get all the benefits that people come to when they come to those areas. And you live in one of them. I almost moved to Bend. Yeah. Yeah. So nice. you understand the mentality of like when you live in these beautiful outdoor natural towns, there's many of them in the world, you just get the side benefits. And it's yeah. outdoor living, good, clean air, great people, healthy lifestyle. It, it just and then it feeds you in all these other areas that you don't even realize. Yeah, I mean, living here fuels my soul. This is my yeah. happy place for sure. Not just yeah. because I have access to all the things that I like to do. But like you said, you know, it attracts similar minded people, people yeah. that like to do the same type of stuff. So I'm always meeting these adventurous people out there on the trails, on the trails yeah. things, at it's the breweries, great. one of the 30 <laughs> plus that we have here. So oh, you guys it's a are cool set. scene. You guys are it's set. Cool scene. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, I mean, you're clearly living this adventurous life with your family. Do you guys have any kind of rules or, or practices or, or ways that enable you to create more adventure time together in your lives? Um, so this is a fun example. Um, it has a lot to do with what you said about the type of people that live in these towns. So one of our dear friends, they run an adventure, it's called Adventure Sports Unlimited. And it's a dive pool, a swim training pool, and they also run trips. 
So yeah. instead of sitting around a uh, indoor uh, Thanksgiving, we're actually going Thanksgiving camping with them down in Big Sur on the coast. And the entire meal will be fresh caught lobster, crab, and fish that we're going to go out. Uh, the couple spearfish, I don't spearfish, but I'm going to fish off a boat and whatever we catch, we're going to eat. So hopefully it'll be good. Um, so I think to your point, it's like the people you, you know, there's this rule. I don't, I don't know if it was Jim Rohn, but the five people you spend the most time with, you're going to, that's how your life's going to look. Whether, you know, it's like a blend of like what they do, what they think and everything around you. So if you spend time with adventurous people, you're going to inherently go on more adventures. Yeah. Because they're going to call you up. I got a buddy who calls me at 6 a.m. He's like, hey, what are you doing today? You want to go surf? And so like you need people like that in your life to just push you outside that comfort zone of like, well, I'll just I'll hit the snooze button. I'll go back to bed or like, no, we're going to do a full moon hike up the top of a mountain and snowboard down by moonlight. I mean, it was things like that that I did in Colorado that just like it just changed me. Yeah, I was like, nature can be this amazing playground. You definitely have to respect it. It will it will show you who's boss every time. Um, but I think surrounding yourself with great people that have the values and the lifestyle that you also want and you feed off each other. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, man. Yeah. It's those types of experiences that not only are you going to remember for the rest of your life, but that really shape who you want to be going forward yeah. and what's important to you. Yeah. And you mentioned mentors earlier and yeah. part of our focus looking at entrepreneurship through the lens of being an adventure is that in every great adventure story, there's a guide or a mentor, somebody who leads the hero down the path to yeah. reaching their goals. Do any mentors come to mind to you that have really helped shape you throughout your career and in life? Yeah, so I want to give a big shout out to one of my mentors, uh, Steve Napolitan, and hopefully we can throw a link up to Steve's work. Um, so Steve was the one who embedded in me the automate, delegate, and delete. Um, that was a big thing. And we've interviewed him on the Zen Hustlers podcast. He lives up in the North Bay of San Francisco. So one of the reasons why I want to give a sh huge shout out to Steve is not only does his whole thing is love your life, love the work, create it by design, schedule your vacations, schedule your time off, schedule fun, and then have that balanced life. So it's not all just work and attract the right clientele. How do you attract the right clients to you? Not just any clients. And so Steve is a huge one for me. He just went through a huge personal journey where he went almost completely paralyzed over the last two years. Oh my gosh. Um, it's a, it's, it's a syndrome of bar syndrome. I can't fully remember the name of it and watching him use his own work, regaining mobility to, he had to relearn how to walk, relearn how to eat. And this guy had like the dream. He had the dream life, the house, the, the money, the family, all of it. And he, and he did it so humbly, but watching him go through that journey and share about it on social media has just, it, it almost brings me to tears. And I, and so many times I reached out to him like, dude, I, I know that this is so hard for you right now, but this is going to make you so much stronger in the long run. Um, so an amazing, an amazing mentor and Steve. Oh my God. Yeah. I need to check him out. So we'll definitely be linking out to him. Yeah. Yeah. His work that all, that all resonates right here. So yeah, because like you talk about this adventure lifestyle, if we were to have an accident or an illness, yeah. it's really hard to live that lifestyle when that stuff happens. And because we're kind of on that spectrum of high energy, high, high adventure, when you lose it, it can really be yeah. a, a shake your detriment. psyche. Yeah. Shake you up big time, big time. Yeah. And you know, life can happen like that, especially when you're, yeah, there are no guarantees out there in the elements. Exactly. <laughs> especially. So are there any rules or like previously held beliefs that you've broken over yes. the years or, you know, things that you've discovered that have helped you to get bigger gains than you ever possibly could have imagined? Yeah, I think um, one was you have to get rid of the 24 seven hustle mindset only. Yeah. Um, that will crush you. It will, you know, if you're 25 and you're single and you have no attachments and no relationships, maybe you can sustain that for a couple of years yeah. to build something really impactful. If you've got relationships, especially with children, that will destroy most of everything in your life, I guarantee, over time. Or one area will kind of break down and it will bleed into all the other parts of your life. So forget the 24-7, 365 
hustle mindset. Yes, you have to have grit and you have to have hustle, but you got to know how to turn it off. You got to know how to say my work day's done. I'm going to go, you know, spend time with the people in my life that I give a crap about. Yeah. And when I'm at work, how can I be highly effective and efficient? So um, again, for me, it's working with great mentors. It's getting great advice. It's being willing to listen and not think I know everything. Listening to my clients in, in depth and really going, what is it that you, what's the underlying need under what you're saying? So I can go above and beyond to deliver something. And they're like, I didn't even know we were going to do this. Like, and um, I, can't, I can't remember if it was Apple, but just adding that sprinkle of unknown delight to someone where you go above and beyond and not just in time, but you just give clients more than they thought. And they're like, yeah, I thought we were just going to do this. And now you're helping me here and you're making my whole flow better. And it, and it just makes people want to refer you more, which oh, yeah. massively helps your business grow. For it sure. makes them want to pay you easily and more frequently. Yeah. And it just helps you grow. Not effortlessly. It takes effort. But um, it's just some some models of behavior. And don't forget, it's all about customer service. We never stop having great customer service. And if there's a challenge with a client, don't be afraid to bring it up. Yeah, I think that was one thing I didn't do in the beginning. And I might have lost a client or two because we couldn't communicate. And now I will say to a client, hey, what's really going on? How can we solve this? I'm here to help you. I'm I'm the guy you're paying in the company to support you. So we've got your back. How can we get through? And it's usually just communication. Yeah. It's usually just lost in translation. I don't like text. I think it's a terrible way to communicate with clients other than a link or other than an asset. But don't communicate over short form messaging like text. Yeah, I agree. And be proactive, you know, when something's going wrong. Like you said, don't be afraid to bring it up. It's going to come out of the closet at some point. It so will. It be, will. Be yeah. that guide and and show up and communicate. And yeah. Like you said, like do the unexpected when you can. That's something that I've tried to really make a habit both in business and just in day-to-day life. Like out there at Starbucks, like buying a coffee for the person behind you, doing yeah. something above the scope of work you you laid out for a client yeah. or a proposal. It all pays dividends down the road and just the the pay it good. forward, yeah, the pay, pay it forward, forward karma model, it comes back to you. It doesn't always come back to you one to one. So if I gave somebody a hundred dollars, it doesn't mean I'm getting a hundred dollars back. Yeah. But like I was at the store the other day and the guy was scrounging for some money. I was like, man, let me just get you your drink. Like, don't worry about it. And and he was like, Oh, he was so thankful. And I was like, Well, just help somebody else out sometime you can. Yeah. And it just like generates. It, it's a really beautiful thing. So I try to do that at work in life. Um, teaching my children that is really important to me. Just pay it forward. Be good people. It's not that hard. It's not hard to be a good person. It's only when you're stuck in your ego and you're stuck in your mind. Yeah. It's as simple as a smile to someone that looks like they're yeah. having a bad day. Yeah. Just say, hey, are you okay? I remember uh, riding a bus in San Francisco and the bus driver was so angry to the point where someone opened the window and she slammed the bus in the middle of the lane, stopped the bus, slammed the window and she was so upset. And at the end of the ride, I said, you know, I think you're doing a great job. This must be so hard. And I hope you have a great night. And she just, you could see the turn. She just softened and smiled and said, thank you. That means a lot to me. Because yeah. when, when you're in that zone and you're having such a hard time, it's hard, to, it's hard to hear positive feedback. But then when you do, it can really blow you up big time. Yeah. And you don't yeah. know the impact that that could have. I mean, no. Could have totally changed. You don't know the, the negative too. You don't know the way yeah. it could have gone for that person. They could have caused an accident. Exactly. Maybe hurt somebody because they were so upset and agitated. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. So as we wrap things up here, yeah, I have a yeah. choose your own adventure question for you. So you can <laughs> yeah, yeah, pick, go for pick which one you'd like to answer okay. or both if you so desire. So oh. number one, what's your favorite place that you visited in the past five years? And number two, just what is a recent adventure that you went on? And in either case, what was it like? What made it so memorable? What was a favorite meal you ate? Give us the details. Okay. Can, I'm going to combine the two because there's a lot yeah. of richness. And because it's COVID, it's not really a fair question because we haven't been able to travel that much. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. So um, this is something I believe in. Uh, create vision boards. Take a lot of different images, whether they're digital or magazines, and cut them and put them on a giant board and put them in front of you. So I did this over two and a half years ago. This summer, my same friends that I was mentioning earlier who have an adventure business offered me a chance to go on a boat, a dive boat in the Caribbean. And 
there's some weird synergies that happen there because I was already going to go back and visit an island called Tortola in the British Virgin Islands. Because when I was a teenager, I volunteered there for a summer helping to build a house and work on farms. Cool. And I hadn't been back since I was 17. It was an amazing summer, changed my life. And then I was like, I want to go back. And then my friend said, oh, well, there's this boat trip that leaves from Tortola the same week you're going to be there. And I'm just like, what? Like, how is that even possible? And they're like, it's a seven day, all inclusive dive boat, sailboat. It's a trimaran. So three Morans on the boat. It's over wow. 110 feet long. And you're going to go to seven different islands in the British Virgin Islands. And I'm just like, wait, how is this even happening? Yeah. And so I got to go diving. I had gotten certified when I was young, but I hadn't done it much living, you know, not, I don't know. I've been near the ocean. I just haven't done it much. So I got to go diving, which again, blows your world away because the world gets twice as big. You have all this world above the sea. And then you go down, you realize everything is alive and yeah. vibrant and amazing. So I got to go diving again. I got to reconnect with a place that was dear to my heart when I was single. And it was the first solo trip I had done in 12 years that I, my, my kids didn't come. Um, I was solo and it was just reconnecting with me. You know, as you get older, you kind of lose touch a little bit of yourself of like, what's still important to me. And then having a grand adventure, I was definitely intimidated about diving a little bit, yeah. but just getting back into diving again and seeing the world just explode huge. Um, the meals were incredible. You asked about food. It was yeah. <laughs> chefs, two chefs on the boat. So the meals were just incredible. I think one day it was my son's favorite meals. He, he was so jealous. It was like barbecued ribs, poke bowl, and like fresh smoothie fruit juice. Wow. I, yeah, I, I took a picture of it and sent it to my son who was uh, in England at the time. And so it was just fantastic. And I think so taking time for yourself to do those things, reconnecting with your former who you knew yourself to be at different ages of your life. And then just throwing yourself into an adventure that scares you because I don't think people realize, and I, I want you to build this in your show. Adventure is discomfort recollected in tranquility. When you're on the adventure, you're not supposed to be comfortable. You're supposed to be uncomfortable. And then later, if you survive the adventure, hopefully you do, you look back when you're in that tranquil place, thinking, oh, that was a really cool experience. But in the moment of adventures, if you're really pushing it, you're not that comfortable. No. Because you're outside that comfort zone pushing yourself in a new area. That's where great things happen, man. Thank you for sharing yeah. that story. That, yeah, that yeah. Definitely lit me up for the day. So good, good. As we wrap up, what what ask, challenge, or advice do you have for my audience before we uh, close things so, out? Yeah. So, you know, I'm I'm realizing that Brickhouse Media does a variety of things, but one of the things we're really good at, and we've spent the last few years doing, is educating professionals on how to create content and more efficiently video specifically. So in 2023, we're launching a video creator training course. So it's an in-person class here in Santa Cruz. You can stay by a beautiful beach town for a couple of days. And then from that course, we will be building um, the online model. So just stay tuned for that because, you know, helping businesses, whether they're small companies or larger companies, figure out a way to efficiently create video will be a strategic differentiator for them going forward because they won't have to outlay. First of all, they'll be in the game. And second of all, they won't have to outlay as much to outside contractors because they'll understand and be able to do some of it internally and then outsource, like we said, some of that work so that they can be highly more productive and pumping out media in 2023. Dude, it's going to be good. People should yeah. check it out. We're going to include it in the show notes along with all of your socials and links. So Jared, my man, this has been a blast. Thanks for chatting with me on this fine Friday afternoon. You shared a ton of value here. And like I said, I recommend to anyone listening who wants to learn how to create better content and build up their brand, follow Jared. He's your guy. He has so much awesome stuff going on right now. And if you're looking for a great content creation team, Brickhouse Media, that's all you need to know right there. So my last question for you, man, yeah. when are we going skiing? <laughs> that is a great question. You know, I got a buddy up there that I got to reach out to. So Let's look at the calendar, maybe spring break. Maybe I'll bring my kids yeah, up for spring break and it's we'll come time. up to Bend, Oregon and get some snow time and just watch these kids just light up. And, you know, it's one of my proudest moments is actually sitting back in the snow and just watching them like rip a trail and even wipe out, you know, just learn oh, yeah. and fall and get up 
not cry, just be like, I love this. I'm going to do it again. Yeah. Because as we get older, just sitting back and watching the things that you've created grow is a, is a thing of beauty. It really is a thing of beauty. So thank you again for the time today. I appreciate it. Love it, man. And I'll look forward yeah. to that experience as well. So until then, thanks again for coming on the show, brother. Have a great weekend. You're welcome, man. Have a great night. To all of our adventurous listeners, thank you for tuning in to today's episode. Please be sure to subscribe, download, and share this on social media or with someone you know will get some value from it. Leaving a review goes a long way in helping people find the show. And I personally appreciate reading them when they come in. So please go drop one if you have the time. We'll see you all next week. And remember, whether we're talking about business or the things that bring us joy outside of work, life is meant for exploring. So go out there and live it one adventure at a time.